some of my tenants enjoy sleeping late. With the noise you make, who can sleep? But we're practicing for the parade. What parade? There's no parade. In case there's a parade, we want to be ready. Well, go practice in the back of the house. Because, frankly, I'm not only a landlord, I'm also a music lover. And Louis Armstrong, both of you together are not. <laughs> Please room from someplace else. Yes, like in Indianapolis. <laughs> Ow! Darn it. I'll never get the hang of it. Of course you will. Julia. Hmm. How much blood did you lose before you learned? No blood, just money. I ruined ten patterns before I made my first potato sack. Potato sack? It started out to be a dress. I made it out of odds and ends, and it's odd where it ends. <laughs> I'd like to finish my potato sack before the school open house. Three, eight, six, hey! You stole your line and stole your touchdown pass. Here's so many queer. Stop them. Drop that. Then, get off. Then, no. I got you both. And this game's over. Corey Baker, football is outside playing. Right. So go outside and stay outside. Get moving, mister. Mother. Yeah, I'll always gang up on a kid. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see where we are. Right sleeve, left sleeve. Oh, now we know why you bought the extra material, Mrs. Wagadorn. You've made three sleeves. I thought that was the collar. Nope. Here is the collar. Then where's the belt? I think you're sitting on it. It's another sleeve. Boys, this is Pamela, our grandchild. She doesn't look like such a grandchild. A grandchild is a child of a child. A child can have a child. He has to have a puppy or a gopher. <laughs> well, Pamela is our son's daughter, and we're her grandparents. Don't you have a grandma or a grandpa? I do, but Cory doesn't even have a father. Yes, I do. But he's still at the present time. Uh, maybe, maybe you boys would like to play with Pamela. Sure, she can be fullback. I'll teach her how to tackle guys. Oh, well, I certainly won't permit Pamela to play those ruffian games. We can play house. Oh, that's much better. Oh, what do you say, boys? Wouldn't you like to play with Pamela? Okay, she can be the mother and I'll be the daddy. No, uh, Earl will be the daddy. Okay, but I sure don't see much fun playing house. Me neither. Houses are what we keep getting thrown out of. She says we have to eat the back of the book. Eat the back of the show and attack the house full of kids. I'm tired of playing jump rope. Me too. We're not even jumping. We're just turning. What does it look like to you? Pop art. But that's uh, hardly the place for it. It's absolutely shameful. This place is turning into a ghetto. Because of a few pictures on the... Now, Bernice. It had to happen sooner or later, and this is just the beginning. Beginning of what? Turning this house into a tenement. It always happens when those people move in. What people? I believe, Mr. Bennett, the reference is to me and my son. Oh, Mrs. Baker, uh, you know my wife? I do now. Uh, somebody seems to have marked up the wall, so I see. Uh, we were just saying it uh, could have been anyone. <laughs> That's not what she was saying. Now, Mrs. Wackadorn, you were saying something else entirely. I can handle this, Marie. Uh, ladies, please, there is nothing to handle. I heard what she said. Is this a private discussion, or does a landlord have a right to join in? Look at this, Mr. Cooper. Oh, boy. All right, so a would-be Mark Chagall runs out of canvas. Does that mean he has to use my wall for making a mural? Well, it's obviously the work of an irresponsible and undisciplined child. 
I wouldn't be too sure, Mrs. Bannett. I've seen paintings like this in the county museum. <laughs> Not to mention very adult restrooms. Mr. Cooper, I believe Mrs. Bennett has a theory on who the culprit might be. Really? Well, in laboratories, theories are very interesting, but in Cooper's courtroom, only facts count. So unless one of you wants to confess, the case of the painted wall is closed. Just like that. This is not Gestapo headquarters, Mrs. Bennett. It's just an apartment building with two mortgages, one vacancy, and a ridiculous tax bill. So I suggest this meeting come to an end and you all go about your business. Unless one of you wants to volunteer. Volunteer for what? For repainting this wall from my mouth to your ears. Why did I? <laughs> Landlord, you couldn't keep me a tenant. Would you like to go to the movies this afternoon? Can Earl G. Wagner come with us? If his mother says it's all right. Can Pamela come too? I don't think her grandmother would give her permission. Could we made her cry? No, Corey. I could go tell her I'm sorry we made her cry, and then maybe your grandmother would let her come with us. No, dear. Mama. Hmm? Are you mad at something? The word is angry, not mad. What are you angry about? I'm angry because Mrs. Bennett thinks you marked up that wall downstairs. No, I didn't. I know you have better manners than to do a thing like that. But besides, I don't have any more of my crayons left. Where are they? I gave them to Earl J. Wagner, and he gave me a whistle. Oh? Only it's a bus that whistle it won't whiff. Well, maybe we can fix it. I gave it to Pamela. Only your grandmother wouldn't let her play with it. So well, she gave it back to L.J. Wagador. What did Earl give her? My crayon. I see. Does her grandmother know that? I don't know. She told me to go home. I don't think she likes me too much. Poor Mrs. Bennett is a sad lady. She thinks that you and I are different. We are different. I am a boy and you're a lady. <laughs> no, darling. What I mean is, we have dark skin, and people like Mrs. Bennett think that Afro-Americans, like you and me and Uncle Lou and Aunt Emma, that we're different. Yeah, Mrs. Bennett says we move into nice, clean places and make them dirty. Did she tell you that? I heard her tell Pamela. Our house isn't dirty. Of course not. But Mrs. Bennett doesn't know that. She's never been to our house. And um, it's up to you and me and all of us to help teach her and other prejudiced people how wrong they are. Yeah. What's prejudice? Let's say prejudice is when some people think that they are better than other people. Oh, does Mrs. Bennett think she's better than us? Not only that she is, but that Pamela is too. And that's why you're not to play with her. Was Mrs. Bennett? No, Pamela. Oh, I don't like Pamela anyway. <laughs> you don't? No, she's a drippy drew. That's not very nice, Corey. I guess I'm prejudiced, too. You shouldn't be. Prejudice is what causes all the trouble in this world. Now go ask Earl if he wants to go to the movies. Yes, ma'am. Mama. Yes? Why do white people put oil on them and lie on the beach and try to get dark like us? Maybe it's because they know that black is beautiful. You're beautiful, Mom. So are you, mister. Now, Jay Wagon on. Why, you want to come to the movies with me? Sure, if my mother lets me. My mother's gonna ask her. Can Pamela come too? Not with me. Why not? Because she's prejudiced. What's prejudice? That's what she is, and I can't play with her. Well, I can't play with you either, so nee, nee, nee. I can play with both of you, so I guess I'm not prejudiced. Pamela, you come away from there and get in the house this minute. Corey, upstairs, mister, on the double. Oh, 
I'm sorry you have to do that, Mr. Cooper. You're sorry. How do you think I feel? I could be at the movie seeing Chapter 10 of The Monster at 8 Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> I didn't know you liked the kiddies' matinees. I don't. As a matter of fact, I hate kiddies' matinees. But I hate painting more. <laughs> you shouldn't have this kind of trouble. I agree. But so far, I've had it with a capital P. This building I bought is an investment for my old age. And believe me, it's getting me there fast. <laughs> I do want you to know I appreciate your attitude. What attitude? Not thinking my son was responsible for that. Nonsense. If anyone is responsible, it's my son. Your son? Simon, the CPA. He's the one who made me buy this building. <laughs> Mrs. Baker. Yes? About that business with Mrs. Bennett, try not to let it upset you too much. I'll try. Remember, a wise man once said, ignorance should be pitied, not punished. That sounds like Shakespeare. And that's what I thought when I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Not bad. Now, let's test it for length. Funny. I've lived across the hall from Mrs. Bennett all this time, and I never knew she felt that way about people. Did you expect her to make a public announcement? Not hardly, but I thought surely she believed in open housing. To her type, my dear Marie, open housing means a tenement with broken windows, no doors, and a hole in the roof. <laughs> you slimy. If you don't stand straight, I might. There. Now, I think we should shorten that a half inch. Oh, I couldn't do that. Lenny doesn't like me to show too much knee. They're only knees. <sighs> Husbands are funny. They look at other women's legs, but when other men look at their wives, they get jealous. Was your husband like that, too? Well, no, not so much about legs. I remember one. I made a new evening gown for a dance at the officers' club. It was uh, kind of daring, you know, cut low. Well, before we left the house, Walter stuck this little sign in my decolletage. And it said, Off Limits. <laughs> <laughs> your Walter sounds like such fun. Oh, he was the wittiest, bravest, most considerate man I ever knew. It's my dearest wish that Corey turns out to be the man his father was. Our boys! It's almost time one of us went to pick them up at the movie show. Oh, I'll go. No, I will. All right. Now you go. All right, and you finish the dress. No, I'll go and you finish the dress. We'll both go. Good idea. And on the way back, I'll stop and buy a dress. <laughs> well, we, I'll go. Yeah, you go. That paint smell is so strong, Mr. Cooper. Can't you get it over with any faster? Well, if you care to help, grab a brush and pitch in. Oh. I suppose you know our lease expires in two months. Are you giving me notice you're planning to move? I hope that won't be necessary. Is something wrong with the apartment? Uh, no, the apartment's fine. Maybe the rent is too high? I have no complaint about the rent. But you do have a complaint? I, I think you know my complaint, Mr. Cooper. Unless it's the smell of paint, I'm afraid I don't. Then I'll put it more bluntly. I think you should be more careful in screening your tenants. I try to be careful. I give leases only to responsible people who pay their rent. Is that enough? For me, it's enough. It keeps out most of my relatives. What about that baker woman and her child? They're not relatives. You have a vacant apartment, Mr. Cooper. What would you do if four of her kind wanted to move in? More people like Mrs. Baker. Well, what could I do except maybe give them a little bonus of a month's free rent? Obviously, I'm wasting my time. You don't hear a word I can say. Oh, don't I? Well, let me try. You are saying that by being white, you're automatically superior to people who are black, right? Well, maybe you are superior, but I'm not. Because if I'm superior, what's Edward Brooke doing in the United States Senate instead of me? If I'm superior, why didn't I get the Nobel Prize instead of Martin Luther King? And if I am superior, how come the Giants got Willie Mays playing center field instead of Sal Cooper? That's the most stupid reasoning I've ever heard. Of course it's stupid. Who do you think I am, Ralph Bunch? What are you looking for, young man? Something for Sharon Tower School. Oh? I'll bring this box of cuts. That's not the kind of thing Miss Wolf wants you to bring. 
It's not. No. You're supposed to share books or records or pictures. Why? Oh, because they're instructive. What's instructive? Anything that teaches you something is instructive. Pretzels teach you something. Really? Like what? Like how to use a toothpick. Oh. <laughs> um, I know what. Why don't you take your new picture book history of Negroes? Yo, I bet my teacher would like that. I bet a lot of children who like Aesop's fables don't know that Aesop was a black man. He was? Go look in the book. Mama. Yes? Do you think you'll ever talk to Mrs. Bennett again? Oh, I hope so. I hope so, too, because then I can talk to Pamela. I thought you didn't like Pamela. I don't, but if I can't talk to her, how can I tell her I don't like her? <laughs> I got it. Corey, can't you walk? I am walking. It's my feet that are running. <laughs> oh, is your mother home? Mr. Bennett. What Please, Mrs. Baker, I must ask you to help us. I know you're a nurse. Yes. My grandchild, she's choking. Oh. <laughs> easy now. Easy, easy now. <laughs> Are you all right, Pammy? Is she? She's just fine. She's a little frightened. <laughs> Poor baby. Oh, Mrs. Baker, if it hadn't been for you, our granddaughter could have. But she didn't, and we're all thankful. Well, what happened? What caused it? This was caught in her throat. Well, that's a crayon. Yes. Well, why on earth would the child put a crayon in her mouth? Oh, I'm afraid I can answer that. Look. Pamela? She was in the bedroom when I went to call her for dinner, and... Obviously, she was drawing on the wall. I, she heard me coming, and she, she panicked from fear that I'd catch her in the act. Our Pamela. Oh, she tried to swallow the crayon. Oh, didn't you, Pammy? Then it was you who marked up that wall in the lobby, young lady. That's obvious, Ralph, now. I'm sorry, Grandpa. I'm sorry, too. More than you may realize, Mrs. Baker. Much more. I didn't mean to get Earl and Coy into trouble. Honest. Mrs. Baker, I've been a very stupid woman. You've opened my eyes. I hope you can open your heart enough to forgive me. I heard some noise. What's going on here? A council of war? No, Mr. Cooper. More like a council of peace. Good. Peace is broken out. I just rented my vacancy, so I may not sell the building after all. Were you planning to? I'm always planning to sell it. The question is, who'd be crazy enough to buy it? <laughs> well, what do you think? Isn't it gorgeous? It certainly is. I couldn't have done it without you. I only supervise. <laughs> I don't remember that pattern calling for a bow. That was my idea. Hmm. What a nice touch. Yeah, just as long as it doesn't fall off. What would happen if the bow fell off? You would see the hole that I burned in the dress when I ironed it. <laughs> hey, can't I get any sleep around here? <laughs> Hi there. Hi. It's so nice of you to stop by for us, Mr. Calvert. Mr. Wagadorn is going to sit with Earl and Corey while Marie comes with us to the open house. Oh, our pleasure, Mrs. Baker. <laughs> it's such a waste to take three cars, as long as we're going to the same school. Good evening. Are you still working, Mr. Cooper? When you're a landlord, what is there in life but work to an early grave? All set. Mr. Cooper, you're not going to paint that wall again, are you? No. Tonight I'm painting Mrs. Bennett's bedroom. And all on account of a mischievous little girl with no control over her crayons. Maybe I ought to invite that mischievous little girl to play in my apartment some weekend. Are you kidding? Why? 
because for over a month now, I've asked Mr. Cooper to repaint my bathroom. Remember? <laughs> Well, maybe... No. <laughs> Shall we? Next, an hour of TV Land Variety with Harry James and his orchestra, Johnny Cash and June Carter, and more. All ahead on The Ed Sullivan Show, followed by The Flip Wilson Show. So stay right where you are. Here in TV Land.